uh, Brent Upshaw, who is um, with Upshaw Capital, but this is his other project, Traction Jedi. And we're really excited to, to see this presentation today because Brent has really been helpful for the startup community and entrepreneurs in general with the tools and using this stuff um, to basically grow your business, grow your audience. So, turn it over to Brent. Appreciate it, Jonathan. Thanks. <clears throat> Uh, so, like John said, my name is Brent. Uh, my my primary thing uh, is uh, is to is running a, a small investment group called Upshaw Capital Partners that that focuses on technology companies and services that have uh, you know the technology as as the backbone. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Traction Jedi is, is what I'm going to chat a little a little bit about today. Um, and it's something that, that sort of bred out of, a, out of an internal need. Um, we, we, uh, we, we finished the alpha version of the technology in July of last year um, and began doing internal testing with some of our portfolio, uh, truck capital portfolio companies um, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, went into you know, our, our beta, our pilot. Um, in the fourth quarter of last year, and finished up in December, and, and had four participating companies, and, and got a lot of good, got a lot, a lot of good feedback and understanding of how we might, you know, price it to make a little bit of money. Um, so, uh, so what it really is is, um, you know, a business process outsourcing, you know, company uh, that focuses on automation, uh, integration, and analytics in the digital marketing space. Um, we. Right now, are the the only one that the only company of, of its kind that um, that's in the automation space that has uh, you know has integration across platform that allows us to to uh, 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 track down data, um, uh, get cross platform insights, and uh, you know gather or distribute content. Uh, right now, uh, the the platforms that uh, that we have integration with are Facebook, Twitter, Buffer, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Instagram, Mailchimp, and uh, Domo. And some of those are probably familiar. There we go. So, uh, so our service verticals: uh, automation, growth hacking, email marketing, and data science. Uh, the the industry that we're in um, is is in marketing automation. Uh, you know, some of you know, there's quite a few companies in that space. It's a, it's a pretty good industry, it's a pretty good sized industry sector. Um, uh, Marketo, Infusions, Infusionsoft, uh, and and Wishpond are, are a few of the ones that have kind of been around for for quite a while. Um, in 2010, a little over a three billion dollar industry. At the end of 15, um, you know, just short of five billion. So, and, and yeah, continuing at a good growth rate. Uh, according to according to Forbes' uh, uh, fourth quarter report on the industry, I think they they were having a, a compounded annual growth rate of about 18 percent a year, which is which is nice and steady for a, an industry that's just you know less than a decade old. Um, <clears throat> Three quarters of, uh, of uh, you know the the world's software as a service companies are using automation platforms uh, in order to you know, get leads, nurture them, uh, in, in an effort to convert them. Of course, um, a quarter of the you know Fortune 500s are, are using some form of automation as part of their of their marketing services and, and platform. Um, and a lot of this is is influenced by you know changing buyer behaviors, uh, you know the marketplace, and and uh, you know how we're able to communicate and reach customers is completely different than it was uh, whenever I you know got into you know my first you know startup that was uh, in this space uh, a little over a decade ago now. Um, and then you know probably the most important thing is is the measurement uh, of the conversions. People are demanding you know much more return on investment, deeper analytics, and so on. Um, you know one of the one of the problems that um, you know that we are kind of setting out to solve is that most of the companies that um, <clears throat> that are you know, that have a marketing automation technology platform uh, that's in service today are really made for, for marketers. Uh, they're not made for the average business person. Um, uh, and, 
if they're if they're not made for a marketer, um, then uh, they seem to be made for someone who needs coding expertise. And so we're trying to uh, we're trying to find a medium to be able to deliver this as a service, so that um, the small business owner uh, is able to <clears throat> is able to you know have the same advantages um, uh, with a much lower barrier to entry as, as the big guys are uh, that are you know, probably on the block. And so that's why I've got the not for human use and the warning label and all that good stuff. <clears throat> so the, the way that uh, the way that it works and the way that uh, we interact with the client and distribute the service is that um, you know we have a client portal. Uh, if you're a client, you go in and you define you know what your your goals are, your campaign objectives, if you will, and then your parameters: how much you want it to spend, uh, you know what are what are you willing to pay to, to create a conversion? Um, we we have uh, what we call dedicated gurus. Uh, so right now we have two of them on our team of five uh, total employees, uh, really small and young so far. <coughs> and what our gurus are is basically a campaign or account manager that works directly with you, uh, so that they can you know kind of translate what it is that you're trying to accomplish and to uh, and use our technology to uh, distribute the service. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, we're, we're trying to, we are combining automation, uh, multi-platform integration, and uh, visual analytics. Um, and then we, you know, with the way that we distribute the service interact with the client, it, you know, what we've set out to do and what we've seen so far is that uh, we're, we're able to give them the same level of control and transparency as if they were, you know, they were executing their own campaigns uh, and going and building it out from Facebook and running it themselves uh, without, you know, with in, in much less time with a larger, you know, much larger efficiency, um, <clears throat> aimed at increasing uh, the return on investment and lowering the financial barrier. Um, <clears throat> so. I mentioned uh, our pilot group. Um, Fizz Kids is, is a local company, a uh, startup um, that uh, that has a vinyl toy brand uh, that <clears throat> that they were trying to understand. Uh, you know, what does the market look like? Uh, what's the size of it? How much is it going to cost to acquire customers in the space, and so on. And uh, <clears throat> and so they were one of the, one of the first. They were actually the first one. Uh, that uh, that used you know they they were we were literally testing out you know algorithms with them um, uh, some of the stuff that they were doing uh, that they were having us do you know they're breaking uh, <laughs> breaking our API integrations to Facebook and Twitter but uh, it, it, it was a pretty interesting and so you know the outcome of that was that that in about 45 days and roughly a thousand bucks they were able to get live market data to help them understand how they go to market, how they price their products, and, and so on. Um, <clears throat> uh, the second one that we did was on the gotelivery.com. That's, that's an upshore capital portfolio company, uh, another local business um, that's, <clears throat> that's in, the, uh, you know, in the, the restaurant marketing and, uh, and delivery business. Um, <clears throat> once, we, once we got a little bit more stability uh, in the technology, we, we really, that, that was the first one where we really started to, to integrate uh, 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 advertising spend into it, um, and it really helped us. Really helped us, you know, build out data sets that allowed us to go after. Uh, we were originally going after Kmart's pharmacy. Uh, we went and pitched uh, to their regional in Little Rock, um, and then uh, and then they said, "Hey, we'd like you to." You know, basically, we've got about eight different campaign segments that we'd like to try this with, um, and they uh, they were really, really the ones that allowed us to kind of accelerate through our our, uh, our beta cycle a little bit faster because of the amount of amount of data and the you know the breadth of customer segments that they were going after between the two brands. Um, just a quick slide, uh, you know, showing uh, a description of the services they can. They can be purchased a la carte uh, or in a, or you know um, <clears throat> or packaged together. Uh, you know the the prices. Um, I won't go through each one, but you know the the main point there is whenever you look at the Marketos, the Infusion Softs, and so on. 
You know, most of them, uh, most of them, you know, have some multi-platform capabilities. Um, so if you do have the skills uh, and expertise to use them, uh, the barrier for entry is pretty high, and um, and you're usually limited to, to two or three platforms when it comes to distributing your content. Um, who's our customer? You know, like I said. What we're trying to do is, is be able to distribute marketing automation technology um, and, and analytics with cross-platform integration to small businesses. There's around 28 million uh, as of the end of last year. A little over half of all goods sold in the United States come from small businesses. Um, the, the first uh, verticals, now that we're live, um, the first, uh, first verticals that we're going after a real estate uh, agency, they're, they're agency types. So real estate agencies, advertising agencies, insurance agencies, and so on. Uh, they, you know, the commonality between all of them is is that um, is that you have sort of a multi-tenant uh, client there, uh, uh, an agency entity supporting you know other independent contractors or small or businesses in and of themselves. Um, you know, one of one of the biggest threats to us at this point in time, uh, and, and especially long term, as as this type of stuff becomes more prevalent, there uh, you know there's consolidation that's occurring. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, across a lot of uh, a lot of the social media sec uh, social media platforms uh, uh, right now, and so. The biggest threat or our biggest competitor is actually our client getting out there and, and you know learning this stuff and starting to do it themselves and, and having enough success that they can you know bump up the spend uh, and, and bring somebody in internally to do it. And so that kind of wraps it up. Uh, open it up for questions. <laughs> <laughs>